Him. H I M. Origin. PG County, Maryland. Synonym. Mellow from the left side. Be easy. The walking bucket. Michael Beasley is one of the most talented basketball players ever. But he couldn't manage to escape the environment he was born into or get out of his own way. While somebody like Kevin Durant went on to improve and constantly show he's one of the greatest ever, Beasley never managed to put it all together. I think, to be honest with you though, the best player to come out of last year has to be Mike Beasley though. You know, the things he's doing on the floor, you know, at it. Six seven people say he can't you know he can't score in the league. Hey man, hey, I'm six nine. Big, man. Big hey, guys. Six seven. <laughs> See, I give him six eight. The things he's doing though on for real to you know to to be six eight can you know, shoot the three with ease, handle the ball, you know, post up strong as he is. You know, Mind you talking to a six ten two guy. Skies, skies are limits, man. You. So <laughs> okay, He was one of the most ridiculous college basketball players we've ever seen. Coming in just a year after K D Beasley took over the Big 12 and put himself in legitimate consideration for the number one pick in a draft that had Derrick Rose, Kevin Love, and Russell Westbrook in it. He averaged 26 and 12 at Kansas State, earning Big 12 Player of the Year, first team All-American, and put up gaudy stat lines like 40 and 17 against Missouri, 44 and 13 against Baylor, 39 and 11 against Kansas in a loss, and 25 and 6 against them in a huge upset for the eventual national champions. It's hard to really explain how good he was to someone who didn't get to see him play, but his one season at K-State is absolutely one of the five best freshman seasons in college basketball history. The man had 28 double-doubles. It's a freshman record previously set by Carmelo Anthony, who had 22. I would like to announce that I'm entering my name into the 2008 NBA Draft. I just feel that it's time to take my games to the next level. In 2008, Beasley was picked number two overall by the Miami Heat, who got the high selection because of a major injury to their best player, Dwayne Wade. Immediately after becoming a member of the Miami Heat, he had a red flag incident where Beasley, alongside KU alumni Mario Chalmers and Darrell Arthur, were involved in a 2 a.m. fire department police encounter after their hotel room was said to have been loud in more ways than one and full of unauthorized guests. He was fined 50000 for this a few weeks later because the NBA was seemingly trying to cover up the fact that the number two pick was involved and had allegedly locked himself in the bathroom and got rid of the evidence as police arrived. Mike Beasley's Mike Beasley, you know what I'm saying, that's all I can say. I feel good about every shit. I mean, when you as fly as I am, as a 19 year old, Beasley was thrown right into the fire in Vice City onto a team that at that time was going through a weird transition as an organization. Now I don't want to completely alleviate Beasley from the blame for being great because we've seen young guys be successful in big environments, but it was a tough ask given his personality and circumstances that he came from. With all that being said, he was actually decent with really good moments during his first season, especially late in the year. Over his last eight games, he averaged 21 and nine on 53% from the field and 50% from three. And as much as his story has been told as if it was like Anthony Bennett's, it simply wasn't. But the off court issues crept up on him once again. Beasley said it himself. He didn't have the best people around him, nor did the Miami environment put him in the best position to succeed. I knew. Yeah. As soon as he got drafted in Miami, all of us was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this can't be good. Who going down there with him? You know, oh, I'm real. in Seattle. I'm, yeah. I'm dealing with rain every day, so I'm not even leaving the house. And yeah. I got C Bell, older dudes in our, yeah, in our neighborhood yeah. that can watch over me a little bit. See, Him on the other hand. It was a little different. <laughs> a little different. So who did you have? What, what, what was that like? See, I, everybody came down. Like, he had all the right dudes from the neighborhood, all the dudes that we, we looked Nobody up Nobody wanted to come hang out with Seattle. <laughs> so, okay, that's you know what I'm saying? saying? My Everybody room, wants to go to Miami. Well, yeah, yeah. He had all the dudes that, that we we used to watch growing up, hooping, went to college, yeah. did the right. You know, people that really cared about us and still care about us today. Not to say that any of my, my family and friends didn't. You can love me to death, which is love, is genuine love, or you can love me to life. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Now, loving me to death is sitting here giving me my advice or, or, or telling me what I'm doing is, 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 is right just 
so you don't make me mad. Just go, mm-hmm. and you love me, you just don't want to see me mad or upset. Yeah. But loving me to life is telling me, hey, hey, bro, like, stop doing that. Like, you don't need, to do, you need to get in the gym. You need to, you know, yeah. things that I might not want to do or things that I might not have on my mind that, you know, but kind of almost forcing me to do it. In August of 2009, he checked into a rehab center. It's not known if it was a drug-related issue he was dealing with or because of stress and anxiety-related issues. And those are problems that people are much more sympathetic and willing to help with now than they were 10 years ago. At that point in time, you were just called a head case or a drug head without considering the pressures one might be dealing with. As he got back on the court for his second season, he performed well once again, playing more minutes and steadily improving. He started all 78 games he played in this season, and the future looked promising for him. But in July of 2010, Beasley was traded to Minnesota for just two second round picks in order to make room for LeBron James and Chris Bosh and begin the Heatles era. I often wonder what would have happened if just Bosh or just LeBron signed alongside Dwayne Wade, leaving room for Beasley to find a role with them. It's an interesting hypothetical, but who knows how that would have worked out. When Beasley showed up in Minnesota, his work ethic and focus was still massively questioned by his teammates, coaches, and the media. But being in Minnesota worked out well for him given that there was infinitely less distractions and about as cold a weather as you're going to get in the league. And in spite of that, he put up 19.2 points per game and 5.6 rebounds and seriously looked like he would have a long career as a real scoring threat. Putting those talents on full display in the beginning of that season going for a career high 42 and 35 in back-to-back nights, he also averaged 31 points, 7 rebounds, 2 assists, a steal and a block on 53% from the field, and 53% from three over a six game stretch. Because of that, he had guys like Doc Rivers calling him the next Carmelo and thinking he could one day lead the league in scoring. The summer before his second and final season with the Timberwolves was full of bad moments for the former number two overall pick. And the lockout also didn't help. In June, Beasley was pulled over for going 84 and 65 and the officer allegedly found weed in his car, which ultimately got him arrested. August came around, and he and KD put on a show in an all-time classic Dykeman Park game, but Beasley lost his cool with a fan and ended up in an altercation in a moment that was completely avoidable. At the time, he was also involved in a lawsuit that said he and his family accepted illegal benefits to get him to Kansas State, which, if you've ever been there, it's more than believable. The story is really detailed and layered starting way back when he was 15, playing for the DC Assault AAU program. It had to do with agents and coaches taking advantage of the talented kid from a young age, offering to pay for things, and then expecting him to carry them to the promised land. One of the people he sued happened to be his former coach and the stepfather of longtime friend, Nolan Smith. Also, on the court, the Timberwolves picked Derek Williams with the second pick in the 2011 draft, who essentially played the same position as Beasley at the time, and added him to a jam-packed front court that included Kevin Love, Nikola Pekovic, Wesley Johnson, Anthony Randolph, Anthony Tolliver, and Darko Milicic. After the lockout and the season resumed, Beasley averaged a career low in minutes, starts, and basically every other major important stat. He also missed 19 games due to injury. Ironically, Williams never even became as effective or impactful as Beasley was. And this happened too. So even if you've got a guy like Kevin Love hurt, or if a guy gets nicked up or in foul trouble, you know you've got guys that will pick you up. Well, and that keeps your bench really uh, aggressive too. But after a disappointing fourth season in the league, Beasley still found another place to go. He signed a three-year, $18 million deal with the Phoenix Suns. And in his first year with the team, he only played 21 minutes a game, shot only 40% from the field, and despite a few great moments like his 21-15-7 game against Charlotte, it was evident at this point that Beasley was never going to be that guy he had the potential to be, though that talent was still there. Things only got worse after Bees was arrested on suspicion of marijuana before the start of his second year with Phoenix. This was the culmination of a lot of bad decisions and moments. Earlier that year in January, he was pulled over for going 71 into 45 on a suspended license and he had a loaded gun in the car. In that January situation, he didn't get arrested, but it definitely played a part in his ultimate release. The Suns waived the 24-year-old Beasley, and the president of basketball operations at the time, Lon Babby, said, we worked hard to devote ourselves to Michael's success, but we have to maintain the standards to build a championship culture. The Suns still haven't made the playoffs. It's 2020. That's for another day. 
Michael Beasley can play the game of basketball. He's got some moves, got a nice touch. He's got decent size on him, he's versatile. Former number two overall pick. Um, obviously, he was no Derrick Rose, and most of us suspected he would not be. But we didn't expect him to have the problems that he's had. I'm not going to go through the litany of things that he's found himself, situations that he's found himself in as it pertains to the law and his behavior. Uh, but it was bad enough for the Phoenix Suns to say, we want you out of here. We don't want you as a part of this organization any longer. My problem is, it's South Beach. If you can't behave in Phoenix yeah. and you can't behave in Minnesota, how you gonna find a, the, how you how you gonna find the incentive to behave yourself in South Beach? Miami Heat gave Beasley a second chance about a week later, and he played spot minutes for a Heat team that made his fourth straight finals. He signed a non-guaranteed deal with the Grizzlies for the following season, but he left the team and was waived during training camp. He then went international and put up 29-10-5 for the Shanghai Sharks. He set the CBA record for All-Star Game points with 59, earning himself a contract with the Heat once again. It, honestly, this one just happened. Um, I came home, just, you know, uh, took a day or two off, stopped working out uh, naturally in Miami because it's winter time. <laughs> um, and you know, the trades happened. CB went down, um, you know, so it, 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 it was just one of those situations that, that, that happened. Um, lucky for us, we, 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 we're, we're familiar with each other, and, uh, you know, so, so it, it makes the process that much easier, that much smoother. Since then, he's played a total of 176 games with four different teams, including a short stint with Houston after his return from China once again, a big role with Milwaukee, and later with New York. He had a renaissance with the Knicks where he looked like he might have once again carved out somewhat of a role in the league, declaring himself your favorite player's favorite player and mellow from the left side. I actually look more to pass than I do to score now because, you know, not to be cocky or anything, but it's so easy. If you watch my game, like if you really watch my game, my jab series and all that, I'm literally just Carmelo on the left side of the floor. My career is like none other. I still think I have a chance to be you know, one of the best in the NBA. You know, like your favorite player. I'm your favorite player, slave player. You know, and 13 and 6 on nearly 50% from the field and 40% from three gets you 10 to 15 million a year for most guys. But not Beasley. And let's not forget what he taught us in this legendary interview with the Taylor Rooks. We are only capable of using 10% of our brain, right? Yes. You believe that? No, it's, yeah, that's, yeah. Did you about to say it's true? I'm saying that's what people oh. say, that that is, that so, is the consensus so scientifically. it's the consensus scientifically. So who was the guy that used 11 that made it okay to say everybody's just using 10? That isn't the right logic. No, 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 like, like, he knew it was 10% of your brain he? based on your brain. Who you don't have he? to be using 11% to know someone else. Timber. He's saying, I'm 10%, you're 10 like, everyone's 10%. That is that, not that, mathematically that, no, correct. That is not, like, like, someone had but to. But you have to have been using 10, more than 10% of your brain yes. to know that everyone else uses 10? Yes, because if you're only using 10% of something, that means you don't know the rest of the 90. After signing with the Lakers in 2018 and looking like he might be on track as a microwave scorer, and an overall just good contributor to a team, his personal life took another unfortunate turn. In a life full of ups and downs, his mother Fatima Smith was his rock and her passing deeply affected him. She had a tough battle with cancer and Beasley only played in 26 games with the Lakers because of it. Beasley's career is somewhat of a cautionary tale of what can happen when you don't handle business or you allow the environment of your past life to overtake your future. And in spite of all of that, all of what he's been through, he still managed to make over $30 million playing basketball at the highest levels possible. I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot of different variables that can go into this and go into that, you know? Like, for me to sit here and say it was all your fault and your fault and your fault and your fault, that, that, that's like pretty childish, you know? Like, at the end of the day, everything I've been through on and off the court 
I'm the only common denominator, you know. So I would be very immature. I would be very naive as to think like it was always somebody else. Now, with that being said, I'm not gonna eat the whole pie. <laughs> <laughs> Before this season, he was close to a deal with the Detroit Pistons, but they never actually reached an agreement. He was given a five-game suspension for breaking the NBA substance rules while he was mourning the loss of his mother, but it's unclear if it's still active. I've been working on this video for a minute now, and I'm really happy that my guy Beasley is getting another shot with the Nets in the Orlando bubble. And now more than ever considering what he's been through over the last year and change. I guess timing was just on my side with him suddenly becoming relevant again right as this video was set to drop. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Big thank you to everyone who watched the whole thing. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed. Hopefully it was as entertaining as it was informative. And shout out to Be Easy, who was easily one of my favorite hoopers growing up. This is Hoop Intellect. I'm Keandre, and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs>